Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, October 23rd, 2023. What's going on? How are you? Ah, how's it going? Jesus Christ. It's the holiday season. I, I should have already started my fucking Christmas shopping. I said, well, first of all, morning. Good morning, everybody. Before I start going off here, before I start flipping out, let me let me let you get a fucking sip of your coffee. You know, or maybe you're driving down the street. You're some beat down fucking person, you know, one of those people that wears a raincoat every day, but you're not a pervert. It's just like part of your mood. Like that Colombo guy just always walking around all schlubby on your way to work. You know, letting people in. That's a great way. That's a great way to get home and go to work. Just let people in. Go ahead, you fucking patient bastard. God bless you. Did that get you five seconds closer to that thing you don't even want to do? Why are you trying to be early to something you don't want to do? Would you like to go in front of me? Fantastic. I'll get to work eight seconds later, and that's eight less seconds I have to listen to every fucking idiot that I work with. That's one way of looking at it. You know, that's kind of how I deal with L.A. traffic. I just I just put on some fucking relaxing music and I just let everybody go. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. No, 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 no. That's fine. It's fine. Go ahead. You go. You you fucking compete. I tapped out. I'm, I'm, I'm driving. I'm, I'm playing for a fucking number one draft pick next season. <laughs> There's that kid coming out of USC. That's what, I'm, that's what this franchise is going for. Um, yeah. I actually uh, was looking at... I'm trying to figure out some gifts to kind of like... Uh, it like different. Like last year was easy. I think five and two is easier than six and three because they're both like, you know, my son's like almost like he's not a toddler. He's just like a little boy. But when he's four, he's going to be a boy. And then my daughter is a, like going to be like, I feel like once you're like seven, you're kind of like a big girl before. Like, is, that, is that what happens before like a teenager? I don't fucking know. This is my first time doing it. So it's kind of like, you know, she's kind of getting too old for toys, but all like the electronics she wants. It's like, I'm not getting you that shit. You know, you're not going on the internet. I have all these fucking weirdos. You know, that's not happening. And then my son, it's just like everything that I want to get him. He's not quite developed enough for like they put out a new green machine, by the way. And the green machine for you younger kids out there, they had the big wheel. So, you know, you know, work shows have to top it, right? So then they come out with the fucking, uh, they came out with the green machine. So not only could you come screaming down the hill in this plastic piece of shit, you could, they had like two handles or something. I forget how it worked. All I know is you, you like pulled one of them. You could do like a fish. T- or oh, was that was the other one? The, 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 the uh. The big wheel after a while came with like a little handbrake on one of the wheels and you'd pull that thing. And when you were going fast enough, it's what well, you got your first separated shoulder and concussion as you launched yourself off the fucking thing. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a lot of that growing up. There was a lot of like getting fucked up with like toys and stuff. Although I do find it funny that my generation talks the, the amount of shit that they told, like, this is what childhood used, like, we're acting like we fought a war, we didn't even fight a war, right, we were in between Vietnam and the Gulf War shit, you know, other than that, that, like, you know, very few people from my generation were involved in that, 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 that 10-day war in, like, was it, 91, but other than that, like, you know, there was no draft, there was nothing, there was nothing, like, happening if you grew up in the suburbs like most of us did i don't know what the fuck they're talking about um 
and what every generation says back when I was a kid, it was great. And what it is, it's it's because you were young and there was no stress. There was no divorce. There was no taxes. There was no nothing. Of course, it was fucking great. Any time was great. Unless you were born during wartime and people were fucking bombing your country, then then it sucks. Other than that, yeah, every decade's great. If you're seven. <laughs> <laughs> I would think so. You know, I went to a uh, I went to an unbelievable fucking wedding this weekend, and um, and like this one of these towns, like you can't even believe it exists. Like the amount of shit that California gets from people who've never been here. I'm not saying to live here because they do tax the shit out of you. But everybody thinking that people are walking around with interchangeable parts and every other weekend they're becoming a different sex or whatever the fuck you think is going on out here. That's not what's going on out here. This is a fucking great place to come out to. Um, Like all states are. Every state, there's something great to do. Um, As far as like like sleepy little town, wine, wineries and all of that stuff. Um, In between like LA and San Diego and LA and... and, uh, what would you call it? San Francisco and then north of San Francisco. There's so many of these, these friggin' places. If you're like married and you're looking to go do something with your wife where you can actually have a good time too and kind of get, you know, and she's out boozing, drinking wine. So she's not going to get on you, whatever your thing is, you know, cigars, smack. Like, honey, you're doing heroin. Uh, yeah. I mean, isn't that like your second bottle of wine? I and mean, we're on vacation, we're on vacation. Heroin would be fucking amazing if it wasn't addictive. If you just could like do it and then just like walk away from it. Have they ever had done like any, like anybody ever been able to do that? It just seems like it's like, it's like flying first class. Like once you do it, you can never go back. <laughs> I can't sit back there again. I don't want to do, I mean, you could do it. That's the scary, I think that that's what like, why I would never try heroin because I feel like once you cleaned up like the rest of your life you just feel like you're flying coach and no matter how good the cup of coffee is no matter how good the sandwich is it's just never as good as that first time you fucking nodded off in a street corner and almost got hit by a bus um fucking evil drug man that shit was out of control when I was a kid when I first came down to New York City, man, there used to be people just fucking, I mean, half, half, the, half the comedians in the city had a bit imitating a fucking junkie nodding off and everybody like laughing, knowing exactly what they meant, you know? They were people like, you'd look at them and you'd just be like, man, when you sober up, your back or your legs are gonna be so fucking fucked up. And the joke with all the comedians was is that the junkies never fell down. They never would fall down. It was like this, this, I don't, I don't know how long a high on heroin lasts, but it was, um, I remember seeing this one fucking guy, like, it was one of the coldest days I could remember in New York and he was standing there. He had a fucking t-shirt, jeans on and sneakers with no socks and everyone was waiting across the street, just freezing their asses off. And whatever he was looking at that he could see, he was laughing his fucking ass off. Like tears coming down his face. He was laughing so fucking hard. He was laughing so hard, I started laughing. And the guy didn't have a fucking coat on. <laughs> I was just like, dude, I didn't even want to know. I didn't even want to fucking know what you're on. Um <clears throat> By the way, somebody sent me this, an, another fucking video of a goddamn shark attack where someone gets killed. You can't believe it. It's like one of the most horrific things I've seen. And the comment section, people are like going, why did you swim away from it? You, you got to swim at it. And fucking, then you can push it away. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Is that what you did when when a tiger shark came at you on your fucking vacation? You know what I would have done? (laughs) 
First of all, you're swimming along and all of a sudden something takes a bite out of you. You're going to freak out. Right? Splash around like, what the fuck? Then you're going to have to have that moment of like, is this really happening to me? You're going to be in shock. And everybody else is like, okay, when that happens, what you do is you remain calm. You simply swim like, what do you mean swim at the shark? Where is the shark? Is it waving at you after it bites you and then swims away and it's under the water and you're just swimming on the surface and you don't have a fucking snorkel and it's salt fucking water? Exactly how are you supposed to determine where this fucking thing is? Um, I don't know, dude. You guys who swim in the fucking ocean are out of your goddamn minds. Out of your fucking minds. I know the odds of it are really fucking low. But, like, the amount of shit I get for, like, flying (laughs) by people that will go to the beach is just, like, I think we've both basically picked our poison. All right? So I I, I don't need to fucking hear it from you. Um, So, anyway, uh, I went up with this wedding. We were up there for a couple of days, and... uh, had a great time, you know, hanging with the lovely Nia. And um, I don't know. I go back and forth with those those sleepy towns up there. Sometimes I feel like I could live up there. I always feel that. And then other times I feel like I would go out of my fucking mind. And then other times it's like, all right, I think I'd go up there and I'd like it. Then I'd go out of my mind and then I would get used to it. And then I'd never be able to live in a city again. Because it looks amazing. You know, some of these places you go to, they don't, they don't even let like chain stores and, well, there's very few of them anyway. It's all kind of like mom and pop fucking places and shit. Um, You know, and you get a couple of fucking lunatics, you know, those people with their politics in their front yard. I love those people. It's like, who, who do you think? Those are like the same people who are going like celebrities should just shut the fuck up with their political opinions, which I agree with. Unless you just go in conspiracy theory. I'm all in if you just want to say corporations own both parties. I I can listen to that all fucking day. Uh, But I don't want to listen to this. This side's good and that side's bad. That's like fucking moron talk. But like the same people who are saying that. I mean, do, do you say it to your neighbor? You know? I like the people who just like around election times will just have a sign up. Vote no on Proposition 2. It's like, okay. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know who you are. But thank you for the fucking advice. What else, what else should I do? What else should I vote for? Um, whatever. Why am I shitting on them? They have, they're, they're trying to, they're, they're politically active. God, that's got to be a fucking major red flag if you're back out there dating. I'm politically active. Um, anyway, yeah, sometimes I think about that. Like, I saw um, you guys like going on like fucking real estate websites and just looking at ridiculous fucking places. You know what I end up looking at? I always look at like farms. You know, I always look at like having like a barn. I can have my like my Ford trucks out there, little podcast studio. Then I always think, all right, and then I'd record a podcast, I'd drive my truck around town, and I would put it away, and then what the fuck would I do? But then I think, well, what the fuck am I doing now, living in a city? I don't really do anything. I try to avoid people. I don't know. I think if you don't grow up in the middle of nowhere, like I I think that's a real hard... That's probably the same thing. Like If you grow up in the middle of nowhere... Which really, every every place is the middle of nowhere. Like, do I live somewhere because there's a fucking movie theater close by? Hey. <laughs> look at me. I'm living somewhere. You know, look at that. Is that a Walmart? Yes, it is. I can see that from my back porch. <laughs> I am, I'm living somewhere. I think if you live in the middle of nowhere, though, and if you came... To the city, you have to be looking at people like, you got to be out of your fucking mind. Why would anyone live like this and sit in this fucking traffic and have to come, like, come up with a strategy, the mindset to just get home? 
You know? I think we both look at it that way. It's a typical shit. And then they're in the middle of nowhere and they think we're all fucking assholes in the cities and everything in the city thinks everybody's out in the country, you know, fucking a yak, whatever the hell we say. Um, anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. I didn't even, I, I caught like fucking 10 minutes of um, the Dolphins Eagles game. Um, I missed all the football this week. Two weeks in a row, I've missed the football. And I got to tell you, it's affecting my gambling. It's affecting my gambling in a big goddamn way. What the fuck is going on with my phone, you cunt? What, what is going on here? There we go. Um, right now, I pick four games a week. I've yet to have a losing week. I've only had one winning week. Every week I've gone two and two. One week I went three and one. So it's two games above 500. Um, as of right now, I am 0 and 3. And I got the Vikings on Monday night. I'm not like against the 49ers. I don't know what I was thinking. So many underdogs won this week, except for the ones that I picked. I was impressed with the Arizona Cardinals last week against the fucking Rams. Right? So I'm like, all right, they'll go up there. They're getting points against Seattle. Seattle's, a, you know, a little touch and go. All right. I like this kid that the Cardinals have. They get fucking smoked. I'm like, all right, the Rams kind of had a problem with the Cardinals. I bet their coach had them buckled down. The Steelers are pretty erratic. I'll take the Rams. Fucking lose that one. Fucking asshole Steelers. I bet on you, you lose. I bet against you, you win. Fuck them. You get like that? At this point, by the time you get into October, there's just teams you want no fucking part of. Pittsburgh Steelers, fuck them. These are, this is my, I'm in my top three fuck them list. The Colts, fuck them. And then the whole NFC South, because I don't have time to, I don't even know what's going on down there. But fuck all that. I don't know what Atlanta's going to do from week to week. I don't know what the fucking Saints are going to do. I'm staying away from the goddamn Panthers because they're going to upset somebody. In Tampa, you never know. Baker Mayfield will keep you in the game, but I don't know what the fuck's going on down there. So I stay away from all of that shit. Those are my three right there. Fuck the Steelers. not saying literally the team. I just mean betting on them. And, uh, fuck, I should have taken the Pats, man. I'm just happy we won, you know? Bill Belichick has never lost three in a row since he finally, that fucking happened. I didn't want to see four in a row. So, uh, you know, I don't know. It's a weird, AFC East is a fucking weird division this year. There's been like nine different storylines that everybody thought, okay, this is what's going to happen. And none of them have happened. So I don't even know. uh, And I don't even think like anybody's even worried about anybody in the AFC East anymore challenging the Kansas City Chiefs to go to the Super Bowl. I'd have to say now it's maybe the, the Ravens. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, it's, a, it's a weird fucking year. This parody and this entertainment league that is in business with Vegas. I, I will never get over that, that they just all of a sudden did that. But I guess I should, I should, should expect it. You know, it's the fucking NFL. They're a corporation. They, can't, they just cannot make enough fucking money. They can't do it. You know, they already find out that fucking football causes CTE. Do they give a fuck? No, they added another game. They don't give a fuck. Give us your fucking money, you cunts. Um, anyway, so um, I got Reno coming up this weekend, everybody. Reno, one of my favorite towns. Um Really looking forward to that. I'm working with Joe Bartnick, who has an unbelievable special, A Killing in Chicago. Uh, You got to check it out, especially the intro, which was totally Joe Bartnick's idea. And it was directed by Ben Tischler, my writing partner that I worked with on a project that I'm not allowed to talk about. Um... Yeah, that's it. All right, let me do the uh, let me do the fucking reads here. I don't know how long this podcast is going to be. Oh, you know what? I didn't even talk about getting in shape. All right, I I am I am I am trying. I'm I can do six pull ups now. They're not pretty, but I'm getting it back. 
uh, and I can get that fucking green shirt on that I was telling you about. Still, Ab seven and eight, they're just not there yet. They're just they're under rubble, an avalanche of fucking bad decisions over the last couple of years that I have to fucking elliptical protein and lift weights my way out of. And uh, I lost my umpteenth pair of sunglasses this year. Sunglasses and umbrellas, they should just be complimentary. You know, just laying around, you just take whatever and fucking leave whatever. Like, you know, those little things in the neighborhood, you know, you got those things where you can just drop a book in, take a book, leave a book, take a book, just walk past it. No one gives a fuck. I don't know. Isn't that what communism was supposed to be? Somehow that didn't work. There's a lot of people shitting on capitalism right now. I always love when people shit on capitalism. It's like, okay, what's your form of government? Let me guess. That's working. It's run by people. It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. It's really not the form of government. That's not the problem. It's the people. Um, anyway. Um, all right. Let's, let's do the read here. Oh, look who it is, everybody. It's old Zip. Recruiter. Right now, I'd like to give a shout out to all those people whose job it is to hire. From the small business owner growing their team to the HR directors hiring hundreds across the nation. You have one of the toughest jobs there is. I mean, you're going a little big there. One of the toughest jobs there is. You want to be a firefighter in fucking California? You want to try to hire people. Although I will tell you, there are times, you know, I would imagine in a job interview listening to somebody say their life story and you already know you're not going to fucking hire them. You're like, oh, God, how do I? And they just keep going and you're just like, when can I interrupt this to end it? Oh, fuck. That happened to me at the wedding. I ran into this person. The guy said, hey, I'm not a Celtics fan, but I'm a big fan of your comedy. I said, well, the Celtics don't need you to be a fan. They, they've won 17 championships without you rooting for them. So what are you, a Lakers fan? And he goes, yeah. I go, what's that like, buying up the league every other fucking year? He goes, yeah. And he goes, yeah, that's brutal. He goes, you know, me and my dad, and I just looked at him. I go, this conversation's over. <laughs> and I only did it because there was somebody else standing there. And the other dude laughed. And then the dude I said it to just went like, yeah, and he just walked away. <laughs> oh, try that out this week. Try that out on that fuck. Uh, you know, the guy was a nice guy. I was just fucking with him. It was just really, I had to go, you know, I had to go take a leak. So I just didn't want to, I didn't want to fucking listen to you and your dad's stories. I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't care. Um, this conversation's over. All right, what am I doing here? I'm selling Zip Recruiter. Uh, but what if I were to tell you that there's something that can make your whole hiring process faster and easier? Oh, Zip. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash bird. Because you've got a busy schedule, Zip saves you time and money smart technology finds and sends you available great matches for your job why don't they do that with like politicians why can't you have like you know this person's actually a caring empathetic person who doesn't believe in war or one person at the top taking all the money and throwing nickels at the rest of the population why why can't we do that with leaders Um, Once you review your list of the most qualified candidates for your job, you can easily invite your top choices to apply. So they're more likely to apply sooner. Hiring heroes. Let ZipRecruiter help make your job easier. What does that mean, hiring heroes? Did somebody fucking save a cat from a tree? Are we talking about veterans? Isn't everybody a hero? We need to normalize the word hero. I love when people, we need to normalize. Oh, that means you're not good enough. So you want to fucking lower the standard? Four to five employers who post on Zip get a quality candidate within the first day. Hey, you don't believe me? Well, go fuck, go fuck yourself. We haven't earned some trust here? Kidding. See for yourself. Go to this exclusive web address and try it for yourself. 
uh, for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Again, that's Zip. That was the Ocean Liner version of it. ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Spell out Burr. B-U-R-R. ZipRecruiter. The smartest way to hire. Don't hire the dumb way. Hire the fucking smart way. Um, I got to get on fucking stage this week, man. I got some shit I want to fucking talk about, man. Um, but let's see what you guys want to talk about. Bill, great emails. Let's see here. Big fan from Brazil. Does that mean you're fat and you're from Brazil or you're a big fan of mine? Fat fan from Brazil. Fat fucking fan. Hi, Bill. How are you? I'm from Brazil and I would love to see you here in the future. I'd love to go down there. Go down there for a F1 or MotoGP race. Uh, Once I heard you talking about on the Monday morning podcast about Brazil, specifically about Rio de Janeiro and what you knew about my country. Unfortunately, some information are not wrong. I was hoping you're going to tell me I was wrong. Uh, When girls slash who is, he spelled it H-O-E-R-S, who is, see gringos. They will try to get money from selling their bodies. Yeah, they, they ain't going to get anything from me. I am not going to another fucking hemisphere and sticking my dick in something. Even if I wasn't married, I'm not doing that. Okay? I, I, that ship has sailed. All right? Old fucking Billy Freckle dick is standing down, if you know what I mean. And Rio de Janeiro is a very tourist city. You will encounter a lot of this. No, because I'd go down there with my wife, and that would be all right. Uh, But I really want you to know the rest of the country. I'm from the south, Curitiba, and is a great city, and it's nothing like Rio. Uh, But don't you have, like, Nazis in their 90s hiding out down there? (laughs) I'm kidding. Not really. Uh, Brazil is a very big country with so many different cultures that I think you would love to know. I would love to know that. I would love to know what a Nazi felt like after he escaped and went down to Brazil and saw how absolutely gorgeous those people were and how they didn't fit into that ugly fucking troll Adolf Hitler's plan. I wonder if any of them sat there and was like, what in the fuck did we just do? What did we do? Why would we get rid of, why would we get rid of, well, first, why would you do that? But, you know, you know, only kill the ugly people. (laughs) What am I talking about? When I hear you, I'm shallow. When I hear you speaking about Formula One and how you like to know history and legends, I recommend you do a search about, I don't know, Artin Senna. Well, I obviously, he's transcended the sport. I saw a whole thing on him. There was a great short documentary about him on YouTube, Uh, Top Gear. Oh, Top Gear, that fucking cunt from England always shitting on Americans. I love that guy because Americans are so stupid. Oh, yeah, what are English people, smart? When you you walk down the street in England, that's what you see is intelligence. That fucking guy. Um... Saying that we're dumb because over here on our cars, they like write it out. They have like the word what it is, you know, over here. We just have a picture. Uh, I think it's easier to look at a picture than actually read, isn't it? I mean, you're literally talking about literacy here. Like that was one of the dumbest points I've ever heard in my life. Um, that guy has like a major fucking issue. I don't know what it is. He's just always oh, goes every like every sh- I don't think he can go one show without it's like I get it. You don't like America. You don't like American cars. You think we're dumb. We get it. You know, like how how much balls does that take to do in your country? I fucking hate people. Why don't you shit on your own fucking country and see if you can keep fucking your viewership up? Fucking old cunt. Um, With shit taste in cars, by the way. Uh, Anyway, love the podcast and go fuck yourself. Um, I would love to, you know, I'm actually toying toying with the idea of doing a tour down there next year. Um, 
I don't know how much I'll get to see, but I mean, from what I've seen of South America, it just looks like a paradise. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous continent. So, I mean, the fuck, you only live once. Why not go down there? Um, but I would like to, I wish I knew somebody down there. You know, I don't like going down just like as a total tourist. Like I, I like knowing somebody so they can, so I don't end up in the Times Square of Brazil. You know what I mean? Am I going to be yet another jerk off hiking up to the Jesus figure up top and taking my fix, a picture, doing the, the fucking peace sign? Uh, I kind of like the way the Jesus is standing up there, right? The Jesus. Um, is he doing the thing like he's on the cross or he kind of have his hands out to the side? I like his hands out to the side. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> anyway. Um, all right, Bill, how do you win an argument with a woman? Uh, well, first things first, you have to be right. And this is just to have a, you know, a chance. And it's not because they're better at arguing. It's just like they just, you know, they just keep going and they start fucking being babies and shit. So it's just like you just at some point you're just like, what am I doing? All right. You're right. Um, all right. Greeting Bill Blumkin Burr. I'm a lesbian and I've been married for seven. I, I you know what? I give up. All right. Please. Tell, OK, I hope you give me advice. If you're a lesbian and you can't win an argument with a, a woman, there's no hope for us. So please tell me. Please tell me you have the solution. The answer to your question. OK, I'm a lesbian and I've been married for seven years. Oh, shit. Here we go. The answer to your question is, which is how do you win an argument with a woman? A woman, she says you don't. OK, that is a hardcore truth. She goes on to elaborate. If you are the butcher of the two and the breadwinner, uh, you are essentially the man and you get shit on like a man. Wow. Oh, my God. I love my wife, but I will never win an argument ever. Even with the most logical and rational talking points presented to her, I don't win. So you're arguing logic. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that that sounds, I mean, in fairness to them, it's our version of logic. Um, she argues with emotion and I don't, and I don't. Emotion beats logic. I would actually say emotion wears out logic. Her favorite thing to tell me is just hug me and love me anyway. There you have it. Argument over. Just accept it. Go fuck yourself. Well, I would say that you've reached a level of enlightenment. You know what I mean? You can't tell me that you don't have some other lesbian that you, you can then, that's in your situation that you don't call up and then vent to. Because that's what guys do. You know? When I'm going through it, you know, I got my buddy that I call up, you know, I call up my buddy Verzi and I, it's just, what is, what do we always say? It always, it starts with the same fucking line, just like, uh, you know, one guy says, is it, is it ever enough? And the other one just goes, no, never. <laughs> it's just like, what happened? What happened? Um, well, I'll tell you this. There is a way to beat them. Okay? What it is is you, you can't argue with them. All right? If, if you're wrong, I stand by this. If you're wrong, you apologize. That builds up credibility. If you're right, you explain your position. They come back at you. You explain your position again. They come back at you again. You just say, all right, fine. Fine. I don't want to argue. Okay? And then the ball is actually in your court because they'll do one of two things. They'll either walk away at that point or they just come at you and they go, well, no, we, we should like discuss this and blah, blah, blah. And then you just go, look, we discussed it. You don't agree with me. I don't agree with you. I don't want to argue. Let's just forget it. All right. And then if they say, okay, 
then for the rest of the day, you're just sort of like there. I'm telling you, this fucking works. You're not happy. You're not mad. You're not excited. You're not sad. You're just there. You're participating in conversation, but you're not really adding to it. And I'm going to tell you something. They know from the second you start doing that shit, they know why you're doing it. So then they're going to go through a couple hour period of pretending like they don't know what's going on. And then eventually they're going to ask you what the problem is. At which point you just say nothing. There's no problem. There's no problem. Nope, there's no problem. It kind of seems like there's a problem. All right. And then finally, they'll just own up. What? Are you still mad because of blah, 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 blah? And you'd be like, just be like, I'm not mad. I'm just, you know, disappointed. And then eventually they come around. It's the only way. But you have to go, you have to be willing. It has to be worth going through Three hours to three days of that fucking bullshit. And the problem is, is if you're logical, you understand how short life is and it isn't fucking worth it. And then what you do at that point is you basically spoil the child. (laughs) But I appreciate and I, I empathize. I understand with what you're saying, but I'm telling you, if you if there's something you really want to win, just try the silent thing. Try this silent thing and then fucking come back to me and let me know how it works. And uh, if there's any other lesbians out there, you want to write in. I want to hear from you. There's got to be a lesbian out there that's figured it out. Um, All right. Touch a truck. Dear Bill. Touch a truck. Okay. On your most recent podcast, you mentioned how much your son is interested in buses, police cars, trucks, etc., and how he always talks about how he wants to drive them. I'm not sure exactly where you live, but in many cit- cities, people organize events called Touch a Truck, where all the vehicles he loves gather in one area for kids to climb on, get inside, or get behind the wheel. Can I ask you a question? Who is the person that named it that? Touch a, I'm sorry. <clears throat> touch a truck? You should never have touch in kids and adults all in the same fucking... It's just, it's just something creepy about that. Um, what else would you call it, Bill? Get in a truck? That sounds like kidnapping. All right, it's a tough fucking sell. I get what you're saying. I like this. I will say I'm a little weirded out by the fucking name. Um... My kids love going to them, and I'll bet it would be a great way to spend a day with your son. Just wanted to give you the heads up and say thanks for all the great stand-up and podcasts. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll say um, I stumbled upon one of those accidentally one time. And uh, I was taking them out to get the kids out to get ice cream, and I pulled up, and there was all of these fire engines and a couple of, like, uh, other town trucks, you know, thing with the bucket you know to go fix the telephone pole shit and my kids like freaked out they had like the best time in that thing so i will look up touch a truck (laughs) as long as it's just a truck um all right don't want a corporate job what's going on uh oh don't want a corporate job what's going on old billy advice i'm a 19 year old college student And I'm caught between getting a corporate job and trying stand-up. However, with everything being recorded now, I don't want to say anything that would negatively impact my chances of getting a job in the future if comedy does not work for me. I feel like it's a huge risk. You came up in a Mickey Mouse era of comedy where if you said something bad in the 80s, Uh, just starting out, you could move on with your life. What are your thoughts? Um, I'm interested in why you called it a Mickey Mouse era. Um, There was some, there was certain areas, that area was better, but as far as like people finding out who you were, the only way you could do that was you had to get on TV and there wasn't a lot of 
opportunities. So there was there was there was good and bad, but I was definitely uh, you know I, I I will be honest with you. I I don't think anything that you say in the stand up world is going to fucking prevent you. I I mean, from getting what fucking job? Like, what job are you going for? Where if you're on stage going like, you know, what the fuck is with people with their cell phones filming everything? Ba 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 ba. I mean, what do you plan on saying? Look, if you go up there and you're just like overtly fucking racist or something, I would, yeah, I would imagine, you know, you can't run for public office. But, uh... That's a kind of an amazing thing that you're between. A corporate job... And trying stand up. Are, are are you conflicted on uh, my my simple question is what is your dream? Do that. If your dreams to have a steady corporate job, I would do that. If your dreams trying stand up, I would definitely do that. Like never trying stand up because you're worried that it's not going to work out and it will affect your corporate position. Is is that's not a good way. To look at it, you know, and also like the fact that you called like when I came up a Mickey Mouse era that made me laugh and you kind of ball break. And so you, you seem like you're funny to me. And uh, I can tell you this a for me anyway, as a fucking stand up job is is way more fun than a corporate job. Comedians don't hire corporations to come in and entertain them it's the other way around you know they they need entertainment <laughs> my job is entertaining as much as i'm working i like i'm almost yeah I'm, I'm i'm closer to 32 years and 31 years in this and i'm loving it and i'm having more fun than i've ever fucking had um and believe me there's a lot of shit that i can say on stage that could affect you know allegedly you know, other areas in my business. It doesn't just, I mean, my business is also corporate. When, you know, when you get in business with like a studio or something, that's that's a fucking corporation. And, you know, you can say the wrong thing and, and, but I never think that. I just think the wrong thing is not saying and doing what you want to do. This whole, you know, I, I like... Whatever you do with your life, I, I like I avoid getting into situations that if you say how you're feeling, that's going to you know overtly affect, advertly, adver- adversely, overtly, Jesus Christ, adversely affect like your career. Like and then why the fuck would you want to be? And then, listen, I understand every job has parameters. You know what I mean? You can't be a lawyer and going out like, hey, I like doing blowing uh, fucking hookers, you know? Filming myself and putting it on my Facebook page. Um, my TikTok fucking totally woodily page, whatever, right? I obviously understand you can't fight. There's parameters. There's parameters what the fuck I do. Like, as much as I go on stage and act like a dick, I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to, like, fucking, you know, spread ignorance or anything. Although some people would say that I do. I don't know. You know, I, I, but I also, I don't know. It's kind of a tough one for me to answer, but like you're 19 years old. Okay. Any stupid ass country, uh, company that is going to hold what you said at 19, you know, against you, like, uh, I even feel like that's going away. It doesn't even fucking make sense. I'm 55 years old. I can't even remember what I thought when I was 19. All right? And I'll tell you, I am a different person at 55 than I was at 50. I'm way different. I had never tried mushrooms. I, like, I figured myself out as far as like what the fuck is wrong with me just within the last five years. I'm hoping with you, you figure it out now or whatever. But I, I wouldn't... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think you should try it. You seem funny. You came up in a Mickey Mouse era of comedy where if you said something bad in the 80s, just starting out, you could move on with your life. <laughs> that's funny to me. I don't know. 
Anyway, the person goes on and says, are all comics when they were younger the equivalent of the kid throwing 90 miles per hour as a 13-year-old or dunking, parentheses, at being funny? Look at that. That's a great analogy. You're a smart person. If that's the case, maybe I should focus on a corporate job. Good, and you have low self-esteem. I mean, you, you, got, you have the whole fucking recipe here. You're funny, you're making great analogies, and then you're shitting on yourself. Um, if you came out of the gate and you're just like, I'm, a, I'm one of the funniest fucking people you're ever going to meet. I'm like, this guy's a hack and he might end up stealing jokes. That's what I would think. But I'm not getting that. I'm getting, I'm getting strong stand-up comedian vibes from you. And um, those stupid-ass corporate jobs are always going to fucking be there. And I can tell you one thing. I don't think I've never met somebody that has a corporate job that loves the fucking job. You know, they like the money. They like the perks. But I, I don't think that anybody I've ever met is just like, unless they're just after money. Like, I don't understand what the satisfaction is. in. Uh, well, I'm fucking painting with a broad brush here. You know what I mean? Like these fucking people that like, they go into a corporation and the job, you know, I'm going to save this corporation money. And they fucking fire a bunch of people and then tell everybody who's left, do all the work that was being, being done by 100 people now with 25 people. And then all the money that they save, they then give to themselves as a bonus. And then they walk away and they can actually feel good about themselves. Those people are fucking lunatics. Um, whatever. I don't know if this is this is a this is a uh, man or a woman, but I I think you should I definitely think you should try. You're also fucking 19. You're young. It's great time to to try it out. You know, just think. You know, I didn't start until I was almost 24. You'll have almost five years on me. How much better you're gonna be than I was at that age? And look where the fuck I got. You know, um, I I definitely think you should go for. It. I believe in you. How about that? I believe in you going out and taking a fucking chance. All right? There you go. All right. Well, the podcast is a little short this week. Uh, I don't know what to talk about because, uh, you know, uh, I have some things going on in my life that I'm just, with this strike, I'm not allowed to talk about. So, um, might be, it's a little, uh, it's a little short this week. That's what she said. Am I the only one still left that still does that? What she, that's what she said. Me and the lovely Nia do it all the time, and we, 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 it's such a stupid joke. We still think it's funny, you know? You know, and that's like the kind of thing that you need in a relationship. You have to have your own jokes. That's the part where Oprah just goes, I like that. You guys, yeah, you should need that. Let's build a show around that, or you just write a book about that. You have to have your own jokes. Yeah. And then everybody in the crowd's like, yeah. And then the book comes out and everybody reads it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really think Oprah, if she wanted to, there was a moment there where she could have taken over the world. She would just be like, you know, 40's the new, yeah, I'm 40 now. 40's the new 30. Yeah, yeah. 40's hot. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever she said. I don't like hamburgers. I sure need those. Yeah, no, no. People just think, you know, all these steer farmers were like suing her. She had so much fucking power. That's a fucking, an unbelievable audience that she had. Just people at home at that time of day, which she didn't she used to come on at like four o'clock. Like, what is that crowd? That's not the crowd that's, that's watching in the morning. Because I remember I used to go on. I never figured out that crowd. That was the biggest fucking waste of time when I was playing comedy clubs. When they would, hey, we got some morning radio was fantastic. That moved tickets. Those fucking local radio guys that were the, 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 the fucking show, the morning show in that market. If you went in there and you weren't a dick and they liked you and you fucking, you know, were cool, self-deprecating, you rolled with their bits and, you know, and you built a relationship, those fucking people like, you know, radio is what got me going selling tickets. 
And uh, but those morning TV shows, oh my god, you would go in there and there would literally be like jugglers. There's always some sort of chef or with some fucking weird. It's candy. It's International Candy Cane Day. And to celebrate, Candy Cane Jane is here. The next thing you know, you're like, you're like standing behind this fucking island. I remember that on International like Pancake Day. I was standing there like I was on the, what was that? The chop, chopping it up. How dumb is the celebrity chef? The fuck are you doing? Get back in the goddamn kitchen. You dumb fucking clogs and your ponytail. I know I just described Emerald, not Emerald, the other one. The other guy there, the fucking, uh, the Red Baron, the Orange Crush, old pork sausages hands, the well method. The fuck is the guy's name? Mario Batali, Mo, uh, Mozzo Mario, my favorite fucking cooking show. Okay, I don't know what that look. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of shows that I would still watch, but I don't approve of what happened afterwards. You know, fucking Molto Mario, The Cosby Show, uh, uh, Partridge Family. I don't know. I don't. I don't have a third fucking example. Whatever. What? What? What do you want from me? Now that '70s show. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I could deal with the show. That's what I'm saying. Um, you know, I still have a Mario Batali fucking crockpot thing, whatever you call it. It's called the Me Too Pot in my house because it has the M. It says MM, I think, on it. It's that fucking... It's like that... What are the, what, Ford used to have trucks of the same color, that sort of pea soup green. They used to have those in the early 70s. Those two-tone ones. Um, the fucking sixth generation Ford F100s, 150s, and F250s. Um, anyway. I think I'm out, people. I, I just don't think I have anything else to talk. I have so much to talk about that I can't fucking talk about. Um, and thank you guys for it, but I'm not allowed to do that right now. And that's it. So I'd like to spend the final eight minutes but I'm not going to do it. Uh, my Boston Bruins beat the fucking LA Kings. I don't know how they did against the Ducks or the San Jose Sharks. I taped those games. I'm going to sit down and fucking watch those. I uh, heard the Celtics are looking good. My Patriots won. You know, whatever. Two and five. I don't give a fuck. You know, we'll get there. You know, if we don't, whatever. We had a great run. Oh, we're going to win forever. I ran into this Boston guy at the uh, at the wedding, and that's what he said. He goes, "You know, what are you gonna do? I mean, we had a, we had a great run. It was fucking unbelievable. <laughs> we got to experience sports bliss, and you know, I wouldn't say it's over. I'd say there's a lull. You know, I figure the Celtics got to push through sometime in the next decade. Who knows? That's a weird game, though, basketball." Um, I don't know why right now, but I feel like I'm at Midas Muffler. I'm just waiting for them to finish the fucking muffler. This isn't good. This isn't good for the podcast. You guys need to get on with your day. All right? Do what I'm doing. All right? Try to fucking lose weight during the holidays. Don't start the year with that fucking... As far as like a guy goes, you know? <clears throat> you know when your belly connects to your back tits? Like your back tits are right on your fucking hips. When that just becomes a whole circle, like you have like a fucking inner tube. You know what I mean? And the funny thing is, if you don't fucking yank your slacks up, then your ass crack is showing in the back. It's just a bad, it's just a sad way to go out. Um, inadvertently mooning people every time you try to tie your fucking shoe. Um, all right, that is the podcast, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for buying tickets and supporting the projects that I do. Uh, it means the world to me because when you do that, I get to continue living this great life um, of telling jokes um, and supporting my beautiful family. So thank you so much. Um, that is it. Go fuck yourselves and I will check in on you on, uh, on Thursday. All right.